Oh, Alyssa, let's start with you, because Rishi Sunak says the Lord should do the right thing. I found that absolutely extraordinary. So we had 64 Tory MPs saying they'd back amendments. At the end of the day, of course, only 11 rebelled. So they decided that actually it was better to vote for it rather than to let it sink. But then we had Rishi Sunak there doing a press conference, which actually was a party political broadcast. Yes, I love that, telling the Lords not to do their job <laughs> and not scrutinise any of the legislation, which is the whole role of the House of Lords when making a piece of legislation. He really there was just trying to pass the buck over to the House of Lords and say, look, I've done my bit. It succeeded. Now, if it fails, it is the law's fault. We all do expect that the bill probably will pass in the House of Lords. The Conservatives don't have a majority there, but the Labour Party, Labour peers do have a bit of a convention on not toppling pieces of legislation like this one. Mm. He also made the claim that the party is totally united. <laughs> um, wishful thinking at best, delusion yeah. uh, at worst. I mean, I saw people on social media asking what planet he was on to say that this party was united. I think maybe more just him trying to save face in the light of a week that has been really bruising for him. His party is more divided than ever. And just because some of those MPs who did on that first day when they were tabling amendments and vote in favour of them, they then abstained or actually didn't vote against the bill, doesn't mean they're not angry about it. It doesn't mean the mm. whole row is over and suddenly they're like, oh, we're really happy with this bill just because they didn't do that. It was more just to try and keep the best possible option flowing through rather than because they're, they're OK with it. I mean, so, Norman, just in terms of the political capital here, obviously it's very important to Rishi Sunak. It's one of his five flagship policies. And the fact is, he's sort of appealing to everyone, saying we've got the third reading through the House of Commons, we're now in the House of Lords. But actually, it goes back to a much bigger issue. Does Rwanda solve all of the problems with the, with the illegal boat crossings? Well, it's extraordinary he's concentrating on this so much when people actually are concerned about the cost of living and the state of the NHS and so on, which are the bread and butter issues for the election coming up. And... For this to be the sort of so-called will of the people and make this a big thing on which he fails or succeeds is a bit bizarre. But, I mean, look, I mean, it's not going to work properly. Rwanda's taking 250 people, I think it is. Um, Initially. If, if, if it happens at all, because no planes are going to start. I doubt there'll be any planes. I'll predict here no planes take off before the election. Um, and even if he gets the planes off the ground, what will it achieve? I mean, it's supposed to be a deterrent, but, you know, if, if frankly, if, if dying in the channel is not a deterrent, then what is? He, he said the phrase, stick to the plan, 15 times yes. in the total of 27 minutes yesterday. It was a bit like Theresa May with that strong and stable <laughs> uh, <Yes. laughs> phrase. Does he have a plan if he can't get the flights His plan the is to try to cobble together the Conservative Party and hold them together with a sticky back plastic as far as he can until the election and make sure they don't divide any more than they have to. That's his plan. This is all about winning the election. It's not, not about anything else. And, and Alicia, just in terms of what happens next and for people who aren't fay with the way that Parliament works, so this now goes to the House of Lords. Again, we go through the same rigmarole. This picks up again, I think, in next month, the middle of next month. And, of course, they will make amendments. It will then play parliamentary ping-pong. Norman and I were talking about it. They could delay this by a year. And, of course, we could be after a general election. They could, and it was, I think, perhaps the most interesting thing Rishi said in that press conference was that he couldn't guarantee that a single flight would be taking off before the election. People were asking him, you know, even if this does get passed, even if this happens, even if all goes kind of in, in his way, will there be a flight before the election? He just refused to answer it. So that doesn't fill the electorate with much hope that even he is sure about his own policy. Uh